And one final thought from a design perspective that I want to leave you with when it comes to SDA versus traditional access layer design is what SDA brings to the table for us compared to what we traditionally had in our networks. So today, if you haven't been migrated to SDA yet, what you have most likely is a user connected to an access switch, as you can see here, that is dual homed into distribution layer switches via redundant links at layer two. And then the distribution layer switches might also be connected with each other via layer two. And the rings on top of the redundant links uh, are representing ether channels in this case. So we can kind of bond all the links together and, and take full advantage of the throughput of the combined ports. So once again, access layer switches, layer two, distribution layer switches at the uplink level most likely will be layer three. But down below to the access layer, they're all purely layer two. In this design, of course, we'll have spanning tree. And most likely you'll be running rapid spanning tree because that's a default spanning tree protocol on all the switches, Cisco switches. And what spanning tree does is it goes through an election process. If you want to watch, uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can watch my video I did on layer two. And I have a fully dedicated video on spanning tree protocol. You'll learn all about it. And once a route is selected by the spanning tree, what ends up happening is it then goes through the process of blocking certain ports. So in this instance, as you can see, it's a shame. We just lost half the capacity. We literally lost one leg that was going up to distribution one. It's pretty much non-functional because that's what rapid spanning tree does for us. So rapid spanning tree is a, is a good technology because it, it blocks redundant links, but it sucks from a perspective of taking full advantage of our investments because now it's a shame that we can't take advantage of additional capacity in our backbone. Now, another layer on top of that would be HSRP running on distribution one and distribution two to provide gateway redundancy. Now, I also did an in-depth video on first hop redundancy protocols and I went deep into HSRP. Feel free to watch that video. I'll also provide a link you can tap on. And here on our gateway machine at the bottom of the screen, the, it's gonna have a gateway IP that it's gonna pick up from a DHCP server. And this is where it sends all the traffic when it doesn't know who the host is on the network or outside the network. And HSRP provides that gateway level of redundancy. But once again, it's a shame that STP blocked that link for us um, and we can't take advantage of it. Um, however, if the other side going to distribution two, if that link were to go down or if distribution two were to go down, if that switch were to went down, then the other side is going to come up and you're going to be able to speak to the router that is running as the primary HSRP gateway and life will be good at that point. But as you can see, but as you can see, there are some limitations with our traditional design. Now, let's look at the SDA access layer to the right of the screen. And ultimately what we call this design is active passive design, because that's what we're dealing with here. Now let's contrast this to the SDA access layer design. So to the right of your screen, so to the right of the screen, you're seeing an access layer switch that's plugged into distribution switches at the top. And these are all layer three links. Once again, they're all bonded using ether channel. And the access layer is layer three, distribution layer is layer three. We have layer three everywhere. We have no spanning tree. And because we have layer three everywhere, it grants us to run a routing protocol like ISIS or intermediate system to intermediate system, which Cisco uses in SDA to be able to build the underlay of our network. And 
because we're running layer three everywhere, the gateway now becomes the access layer switch. So as you can see, it's low latency because the traffic is not having to go all the way up to distribution layer switches. And it's right at the source of where the access switch is. And as we move this, let's say this laptop from this switch to another switch in the network using the magic of Lisp, which I'm gonna discuss in much more detail in my CCNP CCIE course, you'll get to see that what ends up happening is Lisp automatically allows mobility to occur. So this user can then go to another switch, connect their device and be still connected to the entire fabric without having a human operator or a network administrator having to configure that port uh, that they just plugged into. And this is what we call an active active design because we're doing some sort of load balancing using a hashing algorithm. And we may be doing either a flow based load balancing or we may be doing per packet based load balancing, but typically it's flow based. But the idea here is we're distributing the load of the traffic and we're fully taking advantage of our investment using active active design. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.